Okay, so then for supination, you saw the muscles like the supinator comes kind of around from this side, comes back up and ulnar and supinates like this, and then you also have the biceps that does that supinator action. And then the pronator, like we saw in the video where the muscle, one of the things that's significant about the pronator is what, what nerve comes down the front of the forearm here? Yeah, median nerve. And so it can be impinged in the pronator teres. So you get a pronator teres syndrome. So you'll get symptoms like numbness, tingling, weakness down into the median nerve. Or if the <coughs> median nerve gets affected farther down in here, then it's uh, carpal tunnel. And we'll talk about neuro stuff in just a sec here. Yeah, okay. So <clears throat> when you talk about peripheral nerves like median nerve, all the nerve, radial nerve, you talk about sensory distribution. Okay. So one of these days I gotta get a glove painted like that. Right? Here, here's gonna be your which nerve is this? Six. Oh no, it's not this is peripheral nerves, not nerve groups. This one is median nerve. Okay. So median nerve is going to go to the palmar surface of the first, second, and third finger, and then it goes around to the distal part of those same fingers. Because the radial nerve is going to do this part here. So this median nerve is going to also cover these distal parts of the uh, posterior surface of the fingers. Okay. So median nerve is here and also around to back here. Okay. Whereas radial nerve is going to be here, and so then that means what's left for the ulnar nerve is going to be here, both sides. The ulnar nerve is here. I'm entirely confused because it looks like you're, that's the palm again. <coughs> I see it. This is the palm right here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is median nerve. Okay. But it also goes <coughs> the okay. back tip here. Okay, thanks. Because this is what's left out from the radial nerve. This is radial nerve right here. And then that leaves all this for the ulnar nerve. So remember, this is different. This is not C5, C6, C7. This is not dermatomes. Those are nerve root distributions. This is peripheral nerve distribution. Because okay? you have the brachial plexus. What feeds into the brachial plexus are the nerve roots. So if you have disc herniations or, or nerve root entrapments here, then it's going to be dermatomes, C5, you know, myotomes, reflexes, things like that. But this is peripheral nerve distribution. This is once you've left on the other side of the brachial plexus, that's when the nerves have names, the peripheral nerves. So then when we're talking about the carpal tunnel, you're going to have, on this side, you're going to have the scaphoid, which is also called the navicular. On this side here, so the navicular, also called scaphoid, and then the trapezium here. And then the other side of the carpal tunnel is going to be the pisiform and the hook of the hammock. Okay? So you have navicular and trapezium here, and then going across over to here, you have the pisiform and the hook of the hammock. Okay? So you can palpate that pisiform right there, right? That's the bony thing, like basically in the corner of the palm of your hand. And then you go a little bit distal, and technically it would be lateral, mm -hmm. is the hook of the hammock. So if you can feel those two things, if you go too far, then you kind of drop off the edge, and then now you're into, into the meat of your palm. So here's the hook of the hammock, here's the piece of form. And remember, if you go to the radial styloid, you go drop off the edge of that, and then that's the navicular right there, and then distal to that is the trapezium, and then if you keep going, then you're meeting up with the metacarpal. Okay, so then across there, then you have this flexor retinaculum, and that's the roof of the carpal tunnel, and then the floor of it would be the rest of the carpals going across there. So keep in mind that the carpal tunnel doesn't start until here. It's not down here in the wrist, like where you wrist, where you wear your wristwatch or whatever. That's not the carpal tunnel. The carpal tunnel starts above here, so it's basically in the palm of your hand right here. Okay. So there, there's a view down into the carpal tunnel. So again, it doesn't start till here. And then there's where the median nerve passes under into that carpal tunnel. And then the other things that you have inside the carpal tunnel are these other flexor tendons. 
okay? except for the palmaris, which is this more superficial one that goes above the retina right now. So then the, there's the contents of the median nerve. And then this is flexor carpa radialis, flexor pollicis longus, flexor digitorum superficialis, and profundus. So those are these tendons here. So there's another view that shows that. So then there's the roof, the flexor retinaculum, and then the tendons are in the contents of it. And then here's the floor of the rest of the carpal bones go across. Okay, then there's another tunnel for the ulnar nerve, and that's going to be the tunnel of the ulnar nerve. So that's where you have, between the pisiform and the hook of the hammy, that's where the ulnar nerve kind of goes through that little tunnel right there and around to this side of the hand. And it also has the ulnar artery. So there you have between, we mentioned before, you have the pisiform and the hook of the hammy has that ligament that goes across there, the pisohammy ligament. So then you can have, you have carpal tunnel syndrome, and then you have the tunnel of Guillain syndrome. Or it might be better called the ulnar tunnel syndrome or something like that. But anyway, you can get something like that from like, having your hand on this on surface like that for a long time. It's like somebody's riding a bicycle and they have their hand for the drop on the grip or something like that. Something that's putting pressure on that and you can get symptoms in the distribution of the ulnar nerve. So then you come to the vascular tissue. So basically you have the radial artery and the ulnar artery. Of course, the radial artery is where you take an impulse most commonly, but then you also have the ulnar artery that goes through that ulnar tunnel and then has an arch. So I just put this in because this is basically 